Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2016 American science fiction film based on the novel of the same name by James Patterson called Maximum Ride. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. A man named Jeb enters a room in the school in the Death Valley and approaches a girl in a cage named Max. He releases her and tells her that she needs to come with him quietly. He takes her to a truck containing other kids. He checks to see if they're all okay, but suddenly, alarms sound out and the lights go on. As he drives away, a boy named Ari runs out of the building, calling out, No, Dad! Some years later, Max is running through the forest, chased by men with flashlights. She stops at a cliff edge, and as the men get closer, she jumps off. Suddenly, she wakes from the stream. She gets out of bed and carves a tally mark into her dressing table. As she walks past the stairs, she is overtaken by a little boy racing downstairs. She enters the bathroom and speaks with a guy named Fang, who is brushing his teeth. She tells him off for leaving a mess. As he walks away, we notice two huge scars on his back. They live at a place called The Nest in the Rocky Mountains. Max meets Fang again in the kitchen, and he gives her a cup of coffee. He tells her that Iggy wants to talk to her about inventory. Three kids are having breakfast when Max walks in. Nudge is planning on slipping out to go shopping, but Angel has telepathically informed Max. Gazzy is making a bomb. He tells her that it's safe, but he's making it in case the erasers are sent to find them. Max takes a component of the bomb and warns Nudge not to even think about leaving the house. Iggy informs Max and Fang that they only have about six months worth of food remaining. They seem to be advocating leaving the nest, but Max disagrees. She says that Jeb put them there for a reason, to be safe. Max enters a study, looks at a picture of Jeb, and wonders how she can do this without him. The kids are still sitting at the breakfast table. Nudge gets up angrily, and Gazzy leaves to find the component when Angel won't tell him where it is. Suddenly, Angel starts to hear voices in her head. She leaves the house and walks through the forest. Nudge is busy with needlework when Iggy walks in to reassure her that Max cares about her. Angel spots men in the forest and sends a telepathic message to the others, who all rush out to find her. Max has a vision of Angel being taken and jumps into the air and sprouts wings. She flies to the men and frees Angel. Max leans over her body but is then attacked by a guy who tells her that they don't want her anymore. They just want Angel. He kicks her in the head and she falls unconscious. She dreams of falling off the cliff and her drawing when she was a little girl. She is approached by Ari. She tells him that this is a picture of her family. Jeb, Ari's father, is also in the picture and Ari tells her that Jeb is planning something big. His job is really important. Suddenly, Ari is told that this area is off limits and he should stay away. Max's dream continues with their falling from the cliff and Angel calling her name. She wakes up with the startle and Fang tells her that they don't know where Angel is. Iggy says that they must have had some kind of aircraft. Max says that they need to get her back from the school. She says that Jeb knew where it was, so they search his study and find a map. They propose to leave and rescue her. Gazzy and Nudge have to stay behind as they can't fly as fast as the others, but they aren't happy about it. Iggy will stay with them, but wonders why they took Angel, but not the rest of them. Maybe they knew about Angel's special powers. Max also tells them it was Ari who knocked her out. He has been turned into an eraser. Max and Fang fly across the forest as a helicopter arrives at the school. Some men get out carrying Angel. The leader asks for Ari, and we see Ari is outside the nest. Inside, Nudge is on Jeb's computer looking for their personal records. Until now, they had assumed they were test tube babies, but Nudge finds an address in New York that she suspects is her mother's house. Iggy hears a voice in his head and locks the doors. He looks around and finds Ari, who knocks him out. The noise alerts Gazzy and Nudge, who try to fight him but have to hide. Gazzy throws his bomb at Ari, and Iggy grows wings and manages to escape with the other two before the house explodes. In the wreckage, Ari forces his way out. Meanwhile, Angel is being examined by a team of doctors. 
They perform experiments on her, but the leader has them stop for now. Elsewhere, Max and Fang continue their journey and rest at Utah. Suddenly, Max hears a girl being attacked by a guy. She decides to help the girl, although Fang tells her that they are supposed to be keeping a low profile. The guy tries to fight her, but she stops him easily until the guy shoots her with a rifle. Fang arrives and pushes the guy through a window. The girl, who was named Ella, offers to take Max to see her mother, who is a doctor. As she goes to fetch her mom, Fang tries to treat Max himself. He disappears outside before Ella and her mom arrive. As Dr. Martinez tends to her, Max has flashbacks about being in hospital before. She asks for Jeb and tries to fight the medics off before they manage to gas her. Max wakes up in Ella's room. She looks around and sees Fang outside the window. Ella walks in and thanks her for her help the night before. They eat pancakes and Dr. Martinez gives her fresh clothes. She then asks to meet her for a further examination in the clinic after breakfast. During this time, Iggy and the kids are walking through town, observed by Ari. Dr. Martinez notices that Max heals quickly. She examines an x-ray and finds something that looks like a tracking chip embedded in Max's skin. She tells her that it must have been there a long time, so cannot remove it. She also notices the scars on her back. She goes on to tell Max that they will always be there if she needs their help, no questions asked. As Max returns to the bedroom, she reveals her wings and examines them. She then cuts holes in her new clothes so that her wings can spread and climbs out of the window to meet Fang. As they walk away, she seems angry with Fang. They fly onwards and arrive in a cabin near Lake Mead. Fang looks for power as Max lights some candles. They discuss what happened with Ella and Max says that if she hadn't helped, then that would have made her no better than the erasers. They suddenly hear someone outside, and as they go to investigate, they find that it is Iggy, Gazzy, and Nudge. They all go inside. Back at the school, Angel is sleeping. Dr. Rosen explains that since Angel was taken, the others are experiencing increased levels of stress. But despite their experiments, they have been unable to determine the reason for the variance in her brain. The leader tells them to devise a new series of tests. In the cabin, Max tells the others about her chip, but as they don't seem to know where she is, they assume that it isn't a tracking chip. They tell her that Ari came back. They knew it was him, because he still has the scar that Max gave him. Ari was jealous of Max, as she was Jeb's favorite. They decide to go to sleep to get some rest. The next day, Max wakes early and leaves the cabin. At the lake, she finds Ari and they fight. Ari manages to pin her down, but she is rescued by Fang and the others. He is joined by another group of erasers, and he activates a device which sends out a high-pitched noise, causing them all to drop to the ground, screaming. Angel is locked in a cage, and the leader approaches. He tells her not to worry, as her whole family will be reunited soon enough. Max wakes in a cage and checks that the others are present and okay. Gazzy notices Angel, who calls out to them. She apologizes and tells Max not to listen to him. As Max asks who she's talking about, Ari walks in. She is taken to see the leader, who it turns out is Jeb. He explains that they have been monitoring all of their physical health, and Angel developed some anomalies which they needed to examine. He goes on to say that they were kept at the school until they could be sure that their DNA was stable. Then, they were taken to the house to allow them to develop physically and emotionally. He left so that they could develop independence. He says that what he did was best for everyone. He tells her that now that the illusion has been shattered, she will have to stay here. He then offers her a cookie. As she looks down, she sees a note on the plate telling her to trust him. She doesn't know everything. She pushes the plate towards him and walks away. Ari drags her back to the cage but she manages to take his key card. She tells the others about Jeb and says that they should trust him. As they all argue about this, Max speaks telepathically to Angel, saying that they can't trust Jeb and to tell the others that they are getting out of there tonight. Dr. Rosen goes to the lab and reports to the director that Jeb is emotionally attached to the subjects. The director says that the subjects are not human and it is a mistake to believe that they are. They are expendable, and if this gets out of control, 
Then there are other facilities and other products and they can simply pick up and move on. She says that Jeb has forgotten that they are dangerous weapons. Ari goes to see Max. She escapes from her cage and hits him in the face. She hands the keycard to Fang and they escape whilst Ari chases Max. Izzy, Angel and Nudge head for the main power unit to shut it down while Fang and Gazzy go to the chemical room. The breaches trigger the alarms and Jeb orders the erasers to be sent in. Gazzy quickly creates an explosive and they leave. Max is pursued by the erasers and is finally cornered by Ari. The others run in and as Max somersaults over the erasers, Gazzy throws his bomb at them and it explodes. Jeb comes in shortly after to find Ari and the erasers are all dead. Max and the others watch on as Jeb tells them that they don't understand, they're not ready. She tells them not to look for them, this experiment is over. She sprouts wings and flies away. Sometime after, they come out of the forest overlooking a city. Suddenly, Max collapses. She wakes in Fang's arms, who asks what happened. She explains that her head felt as if it was going to explode, and then she had an image of a file in New York. They agreed to all go to New York to figure out what it all meant. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.